everyone. I've just returned from my trip to Tokyo, Japan, and I had so much fun there. You're not going to want to miss this one because I'm going to be showing you my haul from Traveler's Factory, Sakaido, Itoya, Tokyo Hands, Pigment Art Store, various bookstores. I'm going to show you some Ogashi, Daiso, and Character Street in Tokyo Station, and a loft haul. That was my first time going there, and let me tell you, the Japanese people have a great sense of design, and their aesthetic is just beautiful. Not to mention that they have some amazing art stores. And so I want to show you today my haul from the art stores as well as the other things that I bought and brought back from Japan. But I think I went a little bit crazy and I want to show you what I got. I just love their aesthetic and I loved shopping for things because they have some amazing art stores there. And I'm not doing this to like be show offy, like look what I bought and stuff like that, but more to be inspired with how um, another culture has produced such beautiful things. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is that when you shop in Japan, they wrap everything up individually in packages. So after I shopped, I didn't actually go back to the hotel and open them and look at things. So I'm really excited to dive into um, these packages and see what I bought because I haven't looked at them since I came back. It's going to seem like I brought back a lot of stuff because I did, but I also have six kids and I wanted to bring back stuff for them. Okay, the first haul that I'm going to start with is in Tokyo Station. It is Traveler's Factory. I made a special trip to go over there. I did not go to their flagship store, which is also in Tokyo, but I did go to the Tokyo Station one and this is what I brought back. I have been a Traveler's Notebook user for several years now. I ordered mine actually from a company that is in Singapore and it took a month for those notebooks to arrive. So when I went to Tokyo, I was certain that I had to make it to the Traveler's Factory store. So this is what I brought. Um, I got the Traveler's Notebook that is the larger size with the train stamped on the front. I know a lot of you already have that, but I wanted to wait to get that in person when I was at Tokyo Station. And I will do a future video on unwrapping these so you can see what they look like. I also got some inserts for them. The colored inserts, they, these refills are sold there at the Tokyo Station in the aqua and the salmon pink and the yellow ochre. I purchased some um, postcards there, or one postcard I believe, yes. I got this one that has the have a nice trip on the bottom. When I was a kid, I used to sign all my letters with have a nice day. So this reminded me of that and I love to travel. So I got this uh, postcard from there. And believe it or not, I did not bring my traveler's notebook with me, my small one that I had brought on the trip to do some journaling in. And so I asked to have a piece of paper, which they kindly gave me. And I got my traveler's uh, notebooks, Tokyo Station stamp. If you're not aware of this, there are stamps across Japan that you can go and stamp the destination. In fact, at the Tokyo Station, they have a list of a lot of places across Japan that you can stamp the destination places, such as Kyoto or Hokkaido or things like that. But um, I'm going to cut this out and put this in my notebook. I also got some more bands and I got a special click-free pin and I got a couple charms to go in my notebook. This is a camera and the suitcase and the airplane. So I'm all set to start another notebook. And although I brought a small notebook with me, I am toying with the idea of making this one also a travel notebook. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So we'll wait and see about that. So now we finished Traveler's Factory and we're gonna move on to the next store, which you may have heard of. It is a huge art store. This is in Shinjuku, which is a really busy area and a kind of a hot spot for the young people. It's really fun to go there because when you get off out of the station, there's a huge set of steps and a lot of young people are congregating there and meeting friends and it's just a real happening place. They have a lot of great restaurants. You have to walk a bit, I think it's about seven or eight minutes to get to Sakaido. So it's not that far, but um, Sakaido is incredible. They have a lot of floors. I can't remember right now how many, five, six more floors. I'll look that up. And um, 
you go on each floor and it's just loaded with art supplies. They have a lot of stuff. So I got rid of these folders. I know we don't have A4 paper here in America, but I'm always looking for ways to protect my papers or to organize papers. So this Vincent Van Gogh, they have a lot of other kinds as well. And I also got all these little things here. When you first walk in, it's the pin floor, and there are so many pins. I've never seen so many pins in one place in my life. There are literally hundreds of pins. You go down this row, and then turn on the opposite side, there's rows of pins that I almost felt like, I can't do this. I mean, there's too many pins to choose from, and maybe I'll do that next trip. So I ended up selecting a few things, and I wanted to make sure in the time that we had that I could get to the other floors. So what I selected there is a mechanical pencil. This, some of these are for my kids. Uh, uh, Tombow uh, Mono Mechanical Pencil, those are really great, as well as the eraser, which is the really fine zero eraser. I didn't have one of those. And some mono erasers. I got also this little aqua pen, a little um, tape dispenser, uh, runner, tape runner for journaling. I got um, my favorite pen, which is the Pentel Intergel um, pen. And, and then I went upstairs to the book section and I was so excited to find these two books that I brought back. They are extremely heavy, and I was really worried that I wouldn't have the room for them, but I just had to bring these back. They are beautiful books on paintings. This one, um, they're both kind of, this one's Impressionism, and let me open it so you can see what it looks like inside. They have a lot of uh, paintings of famous masters. All right, we're gonna rip this open. So this is called 366, and as you can see inside, it has a lot of paintings, uh, beautiful scenery of landscapes, and some flowers and florals, and I don't know, it's just a gorgeous book, and I'm really excited to use this book for inspiration. The second book is also in the 366 series, and this one is of interiors. I went to school for interior design. I have a master's degree in interior design. So when I saw this, I'm like, have I ever seen a book that has paintings of interiors compiled into one book? I don't think I have. Sure, we've had textbooks that have a lot of history of art, but to have paintings of interiors all in one book, this is exciting. So let's get this cover off. Okay, so here we have the cover of this. And if you look inside, they have beautiful um, paintings. There are many different painters represented here of interior scenes and throughout different time periods. This is going to be a real treasure show for inspiration. I'm really excited about this book. So that is my haul from Sakaido. Surprisingly, I did not bring back a huge amount of art supplies in itself. These are the books. In fact, when I went to Japan, I was thinking I'd come back with a lot of art supplies like pastels or paints or something and I found that the thing that inspired me the most were the books. There is so much inspiration in the illustrated book covers that they have. I noticed that a lot of people are reading books on the subway and on the trains and the books come in a lot of small sizes kind of like that small um, manga size and they have beautifully illustrated front covers to them the insides can be just text without pictures some of them do have pictures it seems to be a book loving culture and that thrilled me so much i did not expect to find so many beautiful books so that's what i ended up coming away with more than anything let's move on to the next store one of my very favorite art stores was a store called itoya it's a multi-level art store in a beautiful district of very fancy stores like Gucci and I think it's next door to Tiffany's Jewelry store. And it took me a while to get there. And when I walked up to the second level, I was like, oh my goodness, I've just reached art heaven. It is so beautiful in there. They have a lot of woodwork and everything is artfully arranged. They have just about every type of art supply that you would ever want. They also carry Copic markers. I found that not every store does carry Copics, but um, if you're interested in that, they also have a lot of the brands of watercolors as well as pastels and paints, acrylics, oils, and um, a lot of stationary products, a lot of beautiful, um, good fountain pens and inks as well. So while I was there, I spent a very long time just looking at everything, gazing at everything, and being very selective with what I would bring back home. 
I think what you select in an art store really shows where you're at right there in your art life. And the first thing that I picked up there were these little tiny tablets of paper that are um, illustrated with these cute little drawings. So this one has a bear and a little girl. I think I got these because it reminds me of my childhood and I love cute stationery and notepads and things like that. So I would love to design something like this. So in here you'll see different designs. This has the um, bear. Look at this. Isn't this just so cute? The girl sitting, she's thinking, she's got a pencil against her chin. Don't we do that? Um, she's gonna write. The paper also has a light texture to it and the paper is just so beautiful. I love the paper. There's the bear um, writing on a leaf and he has a squirrel friend. Then the girl has sent her letter and um, the bear is um, at the post box either about to mail his letter as well where she's writing. So I think they're friends. And this other one is also a bear, a different bear character. And this one got a little bit bent in, the, in my suitcase but he's there and there's a pond and um, I'm waving at the forest and there and he's caught a fish. There he's back um, fishing again. And this other one that I got is um, the night sky, the bear having his breakfast toast and his garden in the sky and at his desk and in the night climbing up to see the stars. These are so cute. And I also got one with the bread. I don't know about you, but I just love bakery imagery and anything with bread or baguettes or rolls or pastries is something that I'm um, drawn to. So this one has some cute little coffee cups, tea cups, and some toast and bread items. So um, I think it's just adorable. I also got some postcards and a really nice uh, paper so that I can paint on these. And a little envelope to keep some stickers in or some little tiny um, papers. And then I found this fountain pen ink. I've seen Ferris Wheel Press ink um, on Instagram before. And when I saw the samples up close, there was a card that showed um, a little circle of each color. I studied those for probably 20 minutes until I selected these two colors. There was one color I actually wanted, but it wasn't available, they were sold out. And this was the second best color to me that I wanted. It's a kind of an olive yellow, um, brownish green and I really like the earthy natural organic feel to this and this one is a champagne pink and my favorite color is pink and gold all of these ferris wheel inks have metallics in them and they do work with fountain pens I do have some fountain pens at home but I wanted to try out the school fountain pen that it's typical for all the Japanese school kids to use so this is just an inexpensive um, little fountain pen by Pilot and it's clear so I thought it'd be fun to be able to see the ink in it. I also had to get the converter cartridge to put the ink in and I came away with one tiny little Japanese stamp which is the symbol for love and I can't wait to use this on some of my art. I think it would look nice to paint a picture here and do a stamp at the bottom. So that is the um, art haul from Itoya. Honestly, I could have purchased so many things there, but I refrained myself. I hope you get to go there because it is just beautiful. I hope you get to go there someday because it's beautiful. Okay, my next art haul comes from a store called Tokyo Hands. When I looked it up, some people say that they've dropped the Tokyo part and just call it Hands, but Hands is a store that has a bunch of levels, like six or seven levels, maybe even more, and each level has something different. The bottom level, I think, is traveling, like luggage and umbrellas and things you would use when you're going traveling, and each floor progresses and has um, just one type of thing, like one has clocks and phone cases and tech, things like that. There's a whole floor with journaling supplies and fountain pens and day timers and calendars and that sort of thing. I absolutely love that floor. And if you go further and higher, you also come across all of the Copic markers and pens. There's tons and tons of pens. There's stationery and cards and all kinds of wonderful things in Tokyo Hands. If you go up even further, there's a craft floor that has these tiny little miniature uh, kits that you can buy and build like of a bookstore or of a cafe. Those looked really fun, but I knew I wouldn't have space in my luggage, so I left them there for another time. 
Anyway, I'll show you what I got from Pokey Hints. This is a Midori notebook. I love Midori paper. It is a beautiful cream paper, natural colored. And this one I got has um, the grid on it, divided into quarters. I don't know what I'm gonna fill this with yet, but I just love Midori paper. This notebook is a company I've never heard about before. This is Stayology, and um, it has beautiful paper as well. It's kind of thinner, but it's pretty sturdy, and they had an example of somebody who journaled in this, and it takes ink pens really well. So I bought one that has enough paper for an entire year, 365 days notebook. So the idea is to journal in this every day. There's a page for every day. So I got this with that in mind starting when 2024 rolls around. I might just do a day, uh, page a day. So I'm excited about this because it has entirely different paper than I've ever worked on. Let's open this to see what's in this bag. Okay, these are the Copic markers that I got. I have a lot of Copic markers already, but seeing everything there to choose from was really, really exciting. And I picked a few colors that I do not have at home. So I can't wait to try this new palette out. I also got some opaque white to use whenever you make a mistake. You can white it out and then marker over it. And then I got um, some more erasers, Posca pins in white, the small and the large marker because you can never have too many of these. I also got just a standard black pen. This was not for me, this was for my son. And I got these pins, uh, they write in black, but this is a pink and a purple also for my kids. I got another one of these pins. I figure I should probably have bought a whole pack of these, but there's also refills for them. So I didn't, I can't find refills like this at home. So I bought a couple of these. And then this was interesting to me. They also have leads, pencil leads that can go in your mechanical pencils, but they're colored. So I picked out turquoise because I love that color and lavender to give to my daughter. She doesn't know it yet. So, receipts. I saved all my receipts so that I could add up and make sure that I was well within the limit of customs. And the last package that I have here is, oh, look at this. Okay, the stickers. I love stickers, but I have a really bad habit of not actually using them because they're so cute. When I was a kid, I would collect all of the scratch and sniff stickers, the ones that have like popcorn or a root beer float or pizza. And I would pull them out, scratch them, smell them, and then put them back. And my friend, my best friend was like, that's not fair. You can't have all those stickers and not use them. Let me have some. Well, I finally agreed when we decided to do that swapping. I don't know if you've done this, but back in the day, we used to get a thick uh, five subject um, spiral notebook and we would decorate the cover with just tons of stickers. And so I used my scratch and stiff on those and we would pass the notebook back and forth in class and write notes to each other. So that's how I used my stickers back in childhood. But now these stickers that I get, I think they're just adorable. These are Sue Atelier stickers. And um, is that how you say it? I don't know. Anyway, I love um, her stickers and I have a lot of them already, but I bought some that I did not have yet, as yet. So I've got the Cat's Catch. Meow, um, Food Trip Number Three, In the Garden, and Slow Day. Then I got some other stickers. This is called Whoopi. Has a lot of food and some fun leisure activities. Excuse me. They had a lot of these kind of stickers, and this one happens to be of travel. And since I just went to Greece, that really attracted my eye. I also found some beautiful Japanese postcards there. And I bought them for the art to hang on my wall because I keep a wall of postcards of places that I've been. I love the style of flat color and the varied ink lines. And I'm assuming it's by the same artist. I'm not sure, I haven't read the backs yet. But I love these postcards and they will remind me fondly of our time in Japan. Let's look here. I love the colors too, look at that. So that is my haul from Tokyo Hands. Let me put this away and we will next get to the next art store I wanna talk about is a store that I've been dreaming about for quite some time. It's called Pigment. Pigment is a beautiful store located kind of near the Haneda Airport and it has hundreds of bottles of pigments collected from all kinds of minerals 
and also I think there's also some man-made um, minerals and powders there, pigments, but it's, and you see them all arranged by color families. It is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And I walked quite a ways to get there because one of the subway stations, the exit had been closed and they de made a detour and it took me, that day I walked over seven and a half miles and up 77 flights of steps. And so I think I really, I feel like I earned my trip to this store. It is stunning when you walk in, there's beautiful music playing, but there's a sign that says no photography. After I selected some pigments, I asked the um, salesman who was helping me, would it be all right if I took one photo? And he kindly allowed me to. And so here is the picture that I snapped really quickly of the wall of pigments. When you walk in, you feel kind of like you shouldn't talk. It's really quiet. On one side is um, our frame pictures of all kinds of gum arabic, which is used in making paint, making watercolors, making gouache. And um, I didn't know there were so many different types of gum arabic. I didn't know what it looked like. There's some that are little pebble-like things, and there's some that are long, look like green beans, but they're not green. They're that um, resin color, that clearish yellowish color. And at the far end of the store are a bunch of tables where they give courses on making paints and um, other things like that. So I could have bought so many different pigments there and it was very difficult to narrow down exactly which pigments I wanted, but I allowed myself to select six. Now, let me tell you, um, when I selected, I wanted one strong pigment and I wanted a red. And when I selected it, he said, sorry, that one's already taken. That's already sold. So the very pigment that I picked out of hundreds of bottles on the wall, I couldn't get that red. So sadly, I didn't come away with the red, but I was really excited that I picked a pigment that was loved and kind of rare. So anyway, let me show you what I came away with. And I'll have to make another video someday on me actually making some watercolor paints with my pigments that I bought at Pigment. I got some yellow ochre. This is French Kin Odo. I got salmon pink. This is Kisho Minomatsu. I got an aqua. These are the favorite colors that I love to work with. An aqua, which is Birakusho Biaku. And I got a paler yellow. And this is Odo 15. And I got this more lime colored, kiwi colored green. Hiwairo? Hiwairo? Is that how you say that? And I got this olive green, which is called olive green. So these are the colors that I got. Now, I, I know that these, this yellow and this ochre are kind of similar, but this one actually will enable me to create a very pale neutral. After I left the store, I was kind of wishing that I had gotten a warm gray instead of this color. But, you know, you only get there once, and I couldn't turn back, I didn't have the time. And so I'm very happy with what I have, and I can't wait to make paints with it. I highly suggest that if you are in Tokyo, make sure you get to pigment. It's an experience you won't forget. So the next art haul I'm going to show you comes from three different stores, and they all have something in common, and that they were all bookstores. Tokyo has some amazing bookstores, some that are just one level, some that are two or three levels, and some that are literally like five, six, seven, eight levels. So I will start with the local store that was near our hotel. We stayed in Musashi Sakai, and there was a small bookstore that was just one level nearby and I went in there one night very late right before it closed at 9 p.m. and I got myself some Copic multi-liners as well as two and there's a brown and a, a warm gray um, because I want to do some uh, work in my journals and in the journals that I just bought with these multi-liners. I also got some postcard size, sized paper that would work well with Copic markers. And now these books here in this stack come from some different various bookstores. I went in every bookstore that I could. Mm -hmm. 
This one is my first kanji book. I loved it for the cute illustrations as, as well as the associations it gives you for helping you learn how to make the strokes and what the character resembles. So for example, this is ka for fruit and they show you that it's similar to a tree with ripened fruits and they show you like if you're drawing it this way and the, how that translates to the actual kanji. So I feel like this book will be very, very helpful in learning the characters of the Japanese language. This small book here is a gift book, and it happens to be a birthday um, wishes for 365, it says 366 days of the year, but I got this for my mom because she wanted an art book from Japan, and it has pictures of florals down at the bottom, and then an abstracted design graphic type of flower um, above, kind of a seal, and I really love how they have abstracted that flower's design and created something that's unique and very graphic in style. So um, I think this is a great book. And I want to show you, see the size of this? You see a lot of books this size in Japan. I would love to create some books of my own and have them printed at this size. You can hold it in your hand well and it fits in your purse or your bag to carry with you. Okay, these, these books here came from a bookstore in Ginza 6, which is a huge department store, beautiful. They have amazing food on the basement level. I'll do another video about that. And that was the first bookstore that I actually went in. And I had to come away with some books on food. This first one has a bunch of um, beautiful illustrations and shows food in different areas and from different countries. It's just, I love the illustrations, I love the format. This one is Food Anatomy. Look at this, it's so illustrated. And when you look inside, same thing, like illustrations on every page. I love how adult books use, use illustration there. I would love to illustrate something like this. I love food and I love illustration and goodness, I need to get started, don't I? This book is on traditional colors of Japan. Japanese Color Harmony Dictionary. I love this book. This book basically um, shows combinations of colors through the seasons. Japanese people are very seasonal and I've been told that they will even change their food packaging from season to season. If you go into a kombini, which is like a 7-Eleven store or a gas station type of store, only there's no gas there, um, that they will even change their food packaging to go along with the seasons. And I think that is so amazing and so original. And I just was so excited that they even put a book together of their color palettes through the season. So I cannot wait to see what type of art I create after looking through all of these color palettes. So that was one of my favorite finds. And then I have this bakery book that I bought in another bookstore, yet another. And this is basically, um, these are baked goods across Tokyo, and I really like the busy format. I tend to not like things so busy, and I feel like this book stood out a lot amongst the other books because a lot of books in Japan actually are more minimalistic in, in um, design. And this one is just jam-packed with words and pictures and illustrations, so I just bought it because I love the way it looked. Another bookstore I went in is uh, Books Kinokuniya, and this bookstore had some pretty amazing books as well. While I was there, I wanted to look at children's books, and I found some of the picture books that I actually recognized from the States that were translated into Japanese, but not a whole lot. And I wanted to get something that was authentic and genuinely Japanese, and so therefore I got books for really young children that were um, of the cute um, kawaii style and I just adore this. I cannot read it but I can use Google Translate. Books. This one is another food book and I also like the photography and the arrangement and the how they did the colors like this side has pink, this side has more of the neutrals and the beiges and the creams and this book is on their sweets and they have a treat called wagashi or wagashi, I'm not sure exactly where the accent falls, but it's um, made with rice pounded into a paste and then it's often filled with bean, bean paste, red bean paste, or some other flavorings. 
and the treats are a pieces of artwork in and of themselves. They can be shaped into anything, but often you'll find them in the shapes of flowers. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I got this book so that I can look in awe and wonder at all the gorgeous shapes and things that um, have been made out of this pounded white uh, rice. It's beautiful, isn't it? And this book is food and it shows um, simple recipes. And I got it to show what the Japanese people eat on a daily basis, as well as a lot of these other pages. And the last bookstore that I went to was called Yorindo, Yorindo. And I got um, this haul from them. <laughs> this is the first time I saw the Midori um, notebook, so I got one of these, which is a uh, more of a vertical size notebook and this idea diary. Both of these are blank paper because I like to sketch and I want to make sure I didn't have any lines on it. And I got also some Sarasa clip pens, gel pens in these colors. I love Sarasa. They write really well. I also got this bright green and these other greens because I like to draw nature. And I got some um, another uh, mechanical pencil for my daughter and another one in pale yellow a highlighter, and another Zebra mechanical pencil. They have amazing pens, just like all the other stores, and you could spend hours just selecting pens. Another store that many people are familiar with is Daiso, and Daiso is like a dollar store, but they have a little bit nicer products that are in there, and so I enjoyed going in there and looking at all the stuff. I bought these two identical little sets of the hiragana. One is for me and one is for my daughter. Little stamp kits, they're inexpensive and you can stamp away. I also got a lot of these little clear zipper pouches. I love organization and I wanted to have some folders to put things in. This is the one that I brought all my receipts in. And also I got these um, handy dandy little school notebooks that kids learn to write their characters, their alphabets in. And so I got a couple of those. This one is just without the quarters and just the little squares. And um, two of these large zipper envelopes which fit A4 paper. So that's Daiso. They also have tiny, tiny little scissors. They have, um, you know, kitchen things. They have just everything like a dollar store would have. One gift shop that I went in when I was walking out of a station um, had these little cloths. I didn't know what they were, but later when I was walking around, I saw that so many people carry around what they call their handkerchiefs. And it was really hot when we were there. It was in the 90s every single day except for the very last day because the typhoon was headed there and it was pouring down rain. But people would take these um, little what I would call washcloths, they called handkerchiefs, and they would wipe the sweat off their face. So you saw a lot of people carrying these, but they have adorable ones um, so that you can get one that represents you. They, they also have these adorable enamel pens with cats on it. Cats are huge in Japan. I think that country loves cats. I love cats, so here we go. So the next part of my haul has to do with the kawaii characters. My daughter had given me a list before I went and asked me to find certain characters that are from either games that she likes to play or manga stories and for a while I couldn't find this and I thought surely they've got to be everywhere here because we see them on the internet and I finally hit the jackpot when I went to Tokyo Station. There is something called Character Street in Tokyo Station and you can walk around this small area and there's dozens and dozens of people. Some stores have lots of long lines waiting to pay. They're very small little stores but they have individual characters like one might be a Ghibli store, one might be a, I don't even know the names of some of these characters, one has this little rice onigiri character that actually they had a person in suits, two people in suits, I have that on video, and people were crowding around to watch them. So these are all characters that the Japanese kids know and love. So I was really excited to come and find this area of stores, and this is what I found. So let's start with these. I bought these, these are Cinnamon Roll and My Melody, and these are actually ones that I wanna keep for myself, because when I was a kid, I loved Hello Kitty. These are part of Sanrio, who cre who's the creator of Hello Kitty. I love these little characters. Then I went in a store that is called Rilla Real Akuma, and all the animals in there, the bears and stuff, they have like cupcakes or sprinkles on them, or food, or they're like a banana split or something like that. They were adorable. So I got this little one that has like a cupcake hat on it or something like that. 
and I think it's just so cute and it's super soft. These are meant for, I know, young kids, but you'll see adults having these hanging off their backpacks, the smaller versions, and I think the Japanese people are like little kids at heart, and that's how I am. I see myself as, a, like, there's a little kid inside still, and so I had so much fun looking at all these things. The next shop I went in was the um, Ghibli store, and I bought this for my daughter. It is a set from the film Totoro, that's how you say it. I didn't watch the film, I haven't gotten into all that, but um, I was so excited to find this, it's beautiful. And they were kind of selling these really quickly. There were people hovering around this area, so I kind of grabbed it up and it was like, let me get in line before they're all gone. And this right here, this mug, she wanted a mug that had all these type of drawings on it, and so I think this is gonna hit the bill. There's also a set of travel chopsticks. It also has a spoon in it. They have the cutest food containers there. On Character Street, I also found Miffy. My daughter had asked for a Miffy doll, and this little cat I bought for my son, and I think it's so cute. So um, nice and fluffy. And these are also little treats that I got for my um, daughter, Sumiko Garashi. So those are the other things that I got and I wanted to show you from Character Street. Then I passed and saw this um, bag. It says I can go anywhere. This character is also one that my daughter loves. It's um, a manga series for the young and I forgot the name of it. Um, it starts with a D. Anyway, that's this. I got these little stories for young kids. It's like miniature beginner um, graphic novel kind of things and they have adorable illustrations in it and very simple words so I figure I can use Google Translate to read these so I'm so excited to be able to open these up one day this is book one you can see on the spine here uh, somewhere where is it I don't know I also got this cute little tape dispenser for journaling and I got myself this little um, character I don't know what it is but it's super cute and it has a little moon on it and you know with pocket dreams art I love the stars the moon and I got this uh, Rilakkuma folder once again for holding papers for a, a four size paper and they have a bunch of these are really inexpensive at the um, stores that are like a, on top of grocery stores as well as these cute little pens that have these super cute characters on it so I'm gonna give some to my kids in summer for me there's also these cute adorable stickers with those same characters on it like I said I love stickers I'm really excited about that and then I found this towel the last day I was there and it was just so pretty I had to get it it is a, a Ghibli a Ghibli it is a Ghibli towel I still don't know how to say that correctly but look at that it's like a home with windows like a townhouse and just looking at that would brighten your day, don't you think? Like if you hung this in your bathroom, how could you have a bad day? And so that's my haul for my kids. The next items that I'm gonna show you have to do with food. Japanese food is absolutely beautifully arranged and when they serve you in a restaurant, it comes on a tray with all kinds of dishes of things. The dishes might have just one bite of a certain food, they take a lot of care into serving you something that is artistic. I shopped at a store called Loft and they have a lot of the food and lunch boxes which they call bento. This is a bento box. You'll have to just Google it to get some pictures but moms will fill one portion with rice and then they will cut out vegetables with a little tiny flour, cookie cutter kind of thing and there might be some little uh, rolled up omelet pieces or a piece of meat, some more vegetables, maybe a piece of fruit and it looks like a work of art. I absolutely love seeing what they have done with their food and I wanted to bring back some of that joy and you would fill your bento box and it fits at the bottom here and um, then you can put your, you can add your little um, pouch. This one I believe is for onigiri, the little rice balls and it's a perfect little slice for that and you can fit that in there and they also have a little egg holder for hard boiled eggs. Isn't that adorable? Anyway, you would put your items in here, you can put your chopsticks and then you draw the drawstring bag and you have your cute little lunch set. Isn't that adorable? And also another way to carry is 
to use this lunch bag. They have a lot of different little lunch bags in just kind of neutral colors. There's a, this peachy pink and an aqua blue and some beige is pretty much what I saw when I was there. They probably come in other colors as well, but um, this also has the liner for keeping things cool. Your bento box fits inside. This bag holds a little bit more so you can fit your chopsticks, um, your onigiri bag, and um, whatever else you want to put in there. So cute little lunch bag, isn't it? I hope you've enjoyed my art haul and my haul of all the other goods that I brought back from Japan. I don't want to make you jealous if you can't get to Tokyo or if you can't get to um, travel other places. My reason for showing you all this is to inspire you to be creative in your everyday life. To go make some art today and to celebrate the life that you've been gifted. Thanks for watching and have a great day.